I don't mean no harm, but it's then trying to still be, deal with the people of God. That can be a struggle, amen. Y'all ain't, hallelujah, amen. But that can be a struggle, amen. And uh, and then now times like these, they're pastors, amen. We were just having, a, some of us pastors having a, a little summit type of meeting uh, on last Monday, the other week on the phone, and uh, I'm trying to uh, just be in praying for pastors. Pastors, uh, uh, there's some, there was a thing in the paper, a thing on Facebook, uh, uh, pastor of a prominent church. I said a prominent church had wealthy over three thousand people in it. That's a, that's a that's a that's a prosperous church. Amen. I don't care how you look at it. That's a prosperous church. Amen. But uh, they don't know. They didn't know how 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 bad the heart, the mind, the, the position of the pastor was. The man killed himself. Amen. Amen. And that's why I'm saying in times like these, we need a savior, y'all. Amen. You, that's why we're holding one another's hands. Amen. We know we link. We're lifting up the ones whose hand we're lifting. We're lifting them up because we don't know what is the need or the situation of the one of the hands we hold. Can I get a witness? But, amen. but we pray and pray honestly unto God and ask him to bless them as we ask him to bless ourselves. Amen. God will do great things on our behalf. Amen. Keep up the one always keep up continue to lift up the man of God, amen. That he will strengthen him and even the man, the woman of God. I don't want to hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't want to get in trouble, amen. <laughs> no, no trouble, amen. But the people of God, amen, that's being used in this service, amen. And likewise yourself, not just the preacher, the teacher, but all of us, amen. We're in that position, but definitely those in leadership. We want to lift them up, amen. And that's God's continual grace and mercy and strength upon their lives. Um, thank God we have a dear brother in our hearts in our midst today. Amen. And it's beautiful. Amen. Uh, first lady, his beautiful wife. It's so good to see them today. Uh, my brother, dear friend, we, he known me before I knew me. Amen. Pastor John Black. Amen. He is going to lift us today through the word of God in just a few minutes. But amen. Any other requests? Any other requests that you want to uh, lay before the Lord? want to lay before the Darby family, myself. My wife, amen. My mother, she would be here today. But we want to pray her strength. The Lord. She didn't want to tell me. She was a little, she was weak, amen. She was tired, but that's how she left it, amen. She don't try to worry us, amen. Yeah, that's that, that's how y'all try not to worry us, amen. But, uh, I'm lifting my mama up, amen. Anyway, amen. That God will sustain her, that he will strengthen her and keep her. Any other request, any other request. A special blessing for our dear mother, Mama Maddie. We want to pray for Mama, amen. We want to lift Mama up, amen. And we ain't taking nothing for granted, amen. We want to lift her up, amen. She, 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 she stand on the wall, she stand on the wall, amen. She crying aloud, spirit not. We want to lift her, amen. No other, no other, no other, amen. Unspoken, any unspoken, just. Acknowledge your hand, amen. And any unspoken, amen. Any unspoken. Again, God sees, amen. See your hands, see your hands. Amen. God sees, he knows, amen. Amen. Yes, all right, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Whisper a prayer. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer. Yeah. 
Jesus' prayer and do. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. Father God, we come this morning. Father God, we come this morning. We come this morning humbly. We come this morning with gratitude. Father, we come this morning with thanksgiving. We come this morning with praise on our lips. Father God, we come saying thank you. We come saying thank you this morning, Father God, for being only the one thing you and no one else could ever be to us, and that is God. Thank you this morning for being God, God of our lives, God over our lives, God that rules and super rules our lives, but this entire world, universe, you made it, it's yours. Thank you today for being God that only you could ever be. We thank you, God, as we're thanking you, as we're thanking you, we thank you. We have so much to say thank you for this morning, but let's just keep the benefits. We thank you for, oh God, giving us, amen, activity of our limbs this morning. Thank you. Oh, Master, thank you for giving us, oh God, the activity of our limbs. You didn't allow us to lay still yet in our beds. You allowed us to get up this morning when you woke us up. You woke us up. It wasn't our alarm clock. It wasn't our cell phone. It wasn't our watch phone. You woke us up this morning. Lord, you gave us activity of our limbs and you allowed us to get up out of that bed and you allowed us to put one foot before the other. Lord, we say thank you this morning. We thank you right now, oh God, for life, health, and strength. But then I want to throw in, Lord, we thank you this morning because you gave us a mind. Oh yeah, you, we thank you for our minds today. You gave us a good mind which made get us to have good sense to come to your house and to worship you and to praise you and to glorify you and to worship you all day for just being God of our salvation. We say thank you today. Thank you for being a God that looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. Thank you for being a God today that cares for his own. Thank you, God, for being the God today that in spite of whatever situation we find ourselves in, being yet a faithful God unto us. Lord, we don't always count your way holy. We don't always count your way holy. We don't always obey your will and your way. We don't always do what you told us to do, but we thank you today that you're a God that is gracious. We thank you today for being a God that is plenteous and plentiful in mercies today. Oh, Lord, thank you for your mercies today because we know that if it wasn't for your mercy, if it was not for your grace, it would have been a long time ago. We've been chopped up, chopped off, consumed a long time ago. But, Lord, we thank you. We thank you today that you didn't, you didn't let our demise come before grace came into our lives. Thank you today. We found salvation so rich, so free. Thank you today. We glorify your name for just being a good God to us. Lord, we know that, 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 that there are those that are, that are not trying to, that are not having any concept, thought, matter, perspective whatsoever about you. But thank you for giving us sins. Thank you for giving us knowledge. Thank you for giving us understanding to know that if it was not for God, where would we be? Continually looking out for us, continually blessing our lives, continually blessing our homes, continually blessing us our jobs, continually making way out of no way. Continually, we might have a little check, but why? It ain't the check that sustains us. It's not the money that sustains us. It's you, oh God, and thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you today. Thank you for being God that has gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. You said in your word it will guard and keep our minds. Thank you for guarding and keeping our minds today. Lord, when the devil tries to talk to us, thank you for keeping our minds 
today. The devil tries to get us and make us be negligent to you. Thank you for keeping our minds today. Lord, that when the devil and the world comes in all kinds of shape, forms, and fashions and, and try to pull us away from you, but thank you for being a God that is oh God, not only faithful to your word, but that keeps our minds today. We glorify you, we worship you, we praise your name today. Father God, the hand of a hand of a hand to hold has been held by the hand of another today. Bless them right now. Oh God, we pray we hold this hand and we squeeze blessings in this hand that we hold. God, we squeeze blessings. We squeeze blessings in the hand that we hold. We spray, we spray, we spray, we spray. We squeeze, we squeeze, we squeeze prosperity. Your prosperity to your people today. Oh God, longevity to our bodies. We squeeze it today. Oh God, the key of our bodies, we squeeze it into their hands today, into their lives today, in the name of Jesus. Supply, supply, and then supply every need according to your riches. My Christ Jesus, our Lord. Then, oh God, we pray that you continue to, as we lift up the sick and shut in today. Those that didn't make it out, those that are unable to, and disabled to make it out to your house, you know. Lord, you know their situation. You knew the ailment before it became one. Touch right now. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus. Meet every need, we pray around the altar of God. Some may need you for one thing and another, may need you for another, but one thing in fact, yes. one thing in common, that is we all need you today. Do that will, do that which is the, 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 the good meaning of your will in our lives today. Circumvent, tear down, destroy, crush out, root out everything that's not like you. Whatever it may be that would hinder us from being all that you would have us to be, take it out. services today. Let it be, oh God, a service that you take full control. Touch your people today, but more importantly, oh God, we pray that you bless us through your word today. We came to hear a word from you, God. We came to receive a word for this next week coming from you today, oh God. We came to be stricken through your word today. Hallelujah. Touch our hearts and change us, oh God, through your word. Spoken and preached even today, oh God, in this hour. Thank you for the servant that you sent our way to proclaim your truths to us as your people. Bless him, touch him, continue to use him for your glory, for your honor. Dear brother, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for the for the fellowship. We thank you for the family ship. We thank you for our lives having been touched years ago through his dear father. Our father and our uncle, Pastor Duffy, we thank you for the relationship. Now I pray we, oh God, ask that you would make known the, the certainties of the relationship between he and you as he preaches your word to us today. And Lord, we will be continue to be careful to give your name the praise. We will be careful to give your name all honor. We will be careful. So yet exalt your name in spirit and in truth. We will be careful to give your name all praise, all worship, all glory, all honor. It's in Jesus' blessed name we pray. As you let go of the hand that you're holding, put your hands together and sing with me. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. And amen. It is so. In Jesus' name. The fact that, um, you know, sometimes so many studies, some churches are just so ritualistic. I know there's an order to things. Look at your name and say, there's an order. There's an order to things. Amen. We do things by our order. But uh, God is the final order. Amen. I say, God is the final order. Amen. And as long as you're in the, in the realm of God, what he say, you're going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Our overseer, amen, as uh, Don his eyes and crossing his T's, amen. Uh, 
Amen. I'm going to do it this way. Amen. Y'all can come on down. I know, amen, that his hand is in God's hand. So he brought one to us today. And um, it gives me great pleasure. Man, I never would have thought I would introduce you. <laughs> Look how God does things. Amen. That's my brother. I looked up to John so much as a young boy you know, growing up. I was over there on them drums. Me and my brother Mark at Holy Bible. Man, we would have some revival. You're talking about revival. Amen. Yeah. His dad. My father, my uncle, Pastor Duckett, Pastor Duckett Duck of the Holy Bible, our home church. But we would have some church, man, amen. And his beloved um, um, sister Ursula, amen. And, uh, she talking about can sing, amen. Just gifted family of God, amen. But it gives me great pleasure today to introduce our dear beloved brother that's going to come. By the way, the Holy Spirit and speak to us that much articles of God will give unto us to hear on this day. He is uh, a second to none man of God. Amen. He is a second to none man just with his own his own strength. But uh, I promise as you pray, amen. Praying and preaching go together. Amen. As you pray with him, amen. God is going to use him for his glory. Let's put our hands together and let's receive our dear brother, Pastor John Black. Pastor Black, preach the word. Pastor Black, let him use you. Pastor Black, let us hear from him. Amen. Pastor Black. Yes, 
listen to the with our gifts and raise them. Amen. Let's lift our gifts. Father God, we thank you for these gifts that are we about to receive. We pray, oh God, that they be used for the building of your kingdom as we be obedient to your will, your word, and your way, even with these gifts that we have placed in our envelopes. Lord, that it will be used for the abundance, oh God, of this collective work, this side of Jordan here on earth, this side of heaven. Bless these gifts, oh God. You said little become much when we place it in the master's hand. And whatever it is, we pray, oh God, that we use it to the uh, building of this your kingdom. That one, oh God, that desire to give and have it not, we pray that you would bless them to be able to give on the next appointed time. We pray that your blessings for us to do give, but also for the one that don't have it to give. And let them, oh God, receive a gift. Something, oh God, this week that would allow them to come next week and give homage and all their time and offering and give it unto you. Lord, you said you would give it to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Said many will do it to our bosom. Bless these gifts now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the hands of the ushers.
more years. All right, all right. Yeah. Angela Black, stand Angela if you don't mind. <laughs> me in check. <laughs> and uh, Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 through 29. Verses 3 through 29. Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 through 29. And that's the first problem. If you think I'm going to stand here and read all the verses, <laughs> you might want to think again. Amen, amen. But there is a word, mm -hmm. there is a line mm -hmm. that occurs and reoccurs. Mm -hmm. It capitulates and continues to recapitulate. Yes, sir. As it says and continues to say, God said. Amen. Yes, Lord. God said. Yeah. What he did. God said. Yeah. It then says, God said. <laughs> God said. Yes, Lord. And God said. All right. It doesn't stop there. No. It goes on to say. God said. <laughs> God said. Yes, yes, yes. And God said. Yes. You go down to the 31st verse. After it says, God said, God said, God said, and He said. It then says, and God saw. So I think it not robbery to put the two together. Uh -huh. Amen. And if the writer had written it just exactly like this, it would be God said, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said, and God said, and God said, God said, and God said, and God saw it. If you don't mind announcing the subject for this feeble Somali presentation, would you just look at your next door neighbor and tell them, keep on saying it until you see it. God bless you, may be seated everywhere. Hallelujah, hallelujah. From chapter 1 throughout chapter 11, the book of Genesis serves to affirm that you and I live in a personal universe. Yes. Maybe that's why the first line of the first verse states that in the beginning mm -hmm. or in beginnings God created or called all things out of nothing. All right. And so what we see initially is a period of remote and unknown antiquity hidden in the depths of the eternal ages. But what we see primarily is the beginning of creation. Yeah. We see how the author journeys back before time was and to the unknown regions of eternity. And though the language fails him as he seeks to suggest the state of things before time was, yes. he gives no hint of a tangible date for this beginning. Instead, the first verse gives us a general introduction to the entire chapter, yes. declaring the truth that all things had a beginning. Yes, yes. And that nothing which existed from eternity originated by chance or from the skill of anyone else. Yes. Right. It simply says the whole creation yeah. 
was produced by the creative power of God. Yes. And then it describes how that from the very first act of creation, God created the matter, the heavens and the earth, yes. out of nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, but now there's something else that must be considered, which is the second verse, which says that the earth immediately after creation was formless and empty. Yeah. That is to say, it was unproductive yeah. and uninhabited. All right. So the narrative then proceeds to relate how in six days God organized this chaos into the well-ordered world we need now. We yeah. now see. Yes. And so what we see is a picture of a world but it is a picture of a very dark world. Yeah. 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 One that is desolate, yeah. one that is covered with water, with the mysterious spirit or wind of God yeah. uh, hovering above the ocean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible Hallelujah. says that darkness yeah. covered the face yes, sir, of the deep. Yes. 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 While the Hebrew language has many meanings for the word darkness, yes. I believe the world was just as the Holy Spirit revealed it to Moses. Yes. It was just dark. Hallelujah. So in order that the world might begin to function in order, God spoke to utter chaos, confusion, and emptiness and said, let there be light. Hallelujah. Since light is a form of energy, it's interesting to note that the power, or that this power rather was not produced by the sun, the moon, or the stars. I, I really don't know what God used to light up this universe. Yes, All I know yes, yes, yes. is that he said, let there be. Yes, yes. And there was. Yes. Let, let me say then that you don't have to relax because I'm really almost through. Hallelujah. Our lesson pretty much hinges on just that. Because a little better than nine times in this chapter, okay. we see where God said. Yeah, 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 but yeah. after he said, we see that he saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therein, my brothers and sisters, yeah. lies the very essence of faith. Yeah, right? yeah. God said. Yes. Yeah. And God saw. That, that's really how we understand and appreciate Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Yes. Because it is there that the writer says through faith. Yes. Yes. We understand that the worlds were framed mm. by the word of God. Yes. The Greek translation said it this way. By means of faith. Yes. Yes. We perceive that the worlds were framed by God's word. And it follows, therefore, that that which we see did yes. not come into being out of that which is visible. Hallelujah. This Hallelujah. says to me very simply then that before one can see, he must say. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I've got to be right about it because when the Bible tells us to walk by faith yes. and not by sight, Hallelujah. that very simply means that faith must permeate our spirit. Yes, yes. It means that faith must saturate our mind. Yes. Therefore, the mind becomes the catalyst for what we speak in faith. Yes, yes. That that is that that that, that is uh, how we can uh, call that which is not as though it already were. Yes, yes. We do it based on faith. Yes, yes. I can't hear nobody. Uh, think about it. So many times in, in, in a quest to maximize our faith, we fail because we miss an essential ingredient. Yes. Which would be to assume that what we say will happen. Hallelujah. I believe I'm right because when God said let there be, yes. it seems to me that somewhere between let and was yes. an assumption took place. Yes. Yes. It yes. seems that God assumed that what he said would take place. And that he did not think twice as if to second guess. No, he just spoke. 
Yes. And what he said came to pass. Yes. But now there's something else that's clear to me that everything God said depended upon that which was stated in the first three verses. Yes. It's clear then that nothing else can take place until he established what we call order. Yes. Therefore, my question is, have you ever been involved in anything where there was no order? Yes. Then let me pause and say, I hope you do realize that what Satan wants more than anything is for your life to be out of order. And he doesn't mind you having things just as long as he can keep you out of order. Matter of fact, you can have everything in life and success to forward and still be out of order. Highly educated, but out of order. Driving a wonderful car, but out of order. Living in a palatial home, but out of order. Married, but out of order. I don't want to belabor the point, but you can be preaching from the pulpit and still be out of order. And, and, and again, the reason this may be of importance is because another word for order is priority. And that's what we witness in the third verse as a mysterious night becomes day. We witness a priority. We, we, we witness order. Look at it again. God spoke to an emptiness. He spoke to a desolate dark place and said let there be light. And it could not have happened any other way because before the world could move forward it had to have light. Well let me see if I can say it this way. In the Hebrew language there's more than one definition for the word dark. Yeah. And one of those definitions or one of those meanings suggests confusion. Another suggests ignorance. So the text could read that, that the earth was an empty wasteland and confusion and ignorance covered the face of the deep. Wow. Which would then establish a priority in a need for light. Why? Because up till now the earth could be anything but productive because it was dark. It was dark or better still, it was confused. It was ignorant to the fact that it should be productive. In other words, it might have thought it should vegetate. It may be a uh, thought that it should vegetate, but obviously the soil did not know that it should germinate or cultivate. It right, did not know that man would spring up from it only to return after a few days. Yeah. It did not know that it would have the privilege to serve as God's footstool or serve as the future inhabitants of the saints. And so it obviously did not see what God saw, which was its potential. Yeah. Now, I'm going to stop talking if y'all don't stop talking. But what I'm saying to you is if you're going to walk by faith yeah. and not by sight, yeah. walking by faith helps you to see yeah. the potential that God has for your life. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. I said, can I get a witness here? Yeah. I don't want to bother nobody. I don't want to make nobody nervous. I just want to know, is there anybody here that knows that you know that you know that you know that you know? That God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I don't care how bad it is, God has a plan. And I'm going to say that one more again. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And this is the reason why God said, He realized He would have to say. Before he saw. Yeah, yeah. Therein lies the priority of every believer. Mm -hmm. You have to say it yeah. before you actually see it come to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I close. Yeah, hallelujah. If God knows everything there is to know, yeah. that says then that he would have had to have seen the world's potential yes, yes. before he said let there be. Right. When it comes to you and I as believers yes, yes. you have to see in your mind's eye yes. 
what it is that you want to happen before it happens. Yeah, all right, all right. In other words, I know I told you to keep on saying it until you see it. Yeah, yeah. But let me add this addendum. You've got to see it before you say it. Right. I can't hear no that. I said you've got to see it before you say it. And then keep on saying it. I can't hear nobody. I said keep on saying it until it comes to pass. In the year of 1960, and I close with this because y'all ain't studying about me and y'all. Y'all are looking at your telephone. Y'all ain't paying me no man. In, in, in the year of 1960, the doctors told my mother she was going to die with cancer. She went down to 89 pounds and her hair turned white overnight. She had a cancerous odor on her body that she could not even stand herself. But mama heard the word of faith. And everywhere she went, she told folks, I've been healed of cancer. The doctors called my father and, and, and told him that, that, that his wife was crazy. He said there's a few oars missing in her boat. She's cancer the surgery and refuses to take the medicine. Talking about she's been healed. My father said, no, you must be crazy. If she doesn't have any more sense than to believe that she's healed, I ain't got no more sense than to believe with her. The pastor called her up and said, don't be a fool. This is 1960. Medical science has not found a cure for cancer. Mama told the preacher, all I know is that you see it. Jesus Christ is the same today as he was yesterday. And he'll be the same forevermore. And I just want you to know that I've been healed. I may be 89 pounds, but I've been healed. Maybe an odor on my body, but I've been healed. My hair may be white. I'm just 30 years old, but I've been healed. Odor was so bad you could smell mama coming before she got to where she was going. But mama kept on saying it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like running all over this church. Yeah. I said she kept on saying it. Yeah. One day I looked at mama and that 89 pounds turned into 99 pounds. 99 pounds into 110 pounds. 110 pounds into 127 pounds. 130 pounds. That hair started turning back to its original color. That odor left her body. That's been over 60 years ago. I said, you know, buddy, she was 30 years old then. The doctor died 50 years ago. The pastor died 48 years ago. Mama lived to be 91. Hallelujah. I feel like taking a praise break. I said, hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to you. Somebody shout unto God with a voice and cry. Oh, come on, somebody give him some glory. Yeah. Yeah. As I bid you good day, since the universe was framed by the word of God, it makes sense that what we see was not made by what we see. And that makes sense because of this world were framed out of materials yes. which were subject to human observation. Yes. There would really be no room for faith. Yes. If there was no room for faith, yes. time could not be contained by a mere span. Yes. Science could not legitimately trace the world back to its origin. Yes. And there would be no eternity because God would not exist. Yes. But I'm glad to say that there is a God. I can't hear nobody. I said there is a God. I'm going to say it again. There came something just by the word of God. So throughout the entire chapter, God stood out on nothing. And said, let there be and there was. In other words, he spoke things into being by faith. And you and I have that same ability. To call that, I'm going to throw this microphone at y'all if y'all don't say something. To call that which is not God Almighty as though it already were. You can speak your healing into existence. You can speak your prosperity into existence. You can declare. 
by what God's going to do by faith. And God will do what he said he would do by faith. Hang on in there. I said hang on in there. I said hang on in there. Never give up. Never give in. Don't throw in the towel when God is fire. That's enough. That's enough. Anybody here know that God is for you? I said anybody here know that God is for you? You got the call that which is not. I challenge you today to leave this place knowing that you know that you know that you know that you know that you have God in you. I can't hear nobody. I said, know that you have God in you. And because God is in you, you have faith in you. Oh, I wish I had a shout in church. Y'all know what to shout. And nothing is impossible. Look at your neighbor and tell them nothing is impossible. Oh, come on, say it again, nothing is impossible. Look, look, look at what he said to the disciples. He said, Say to yonder's mountain, yeah. move from here yeah. to there. Yeah. Now what does a mountain represent? A mountain represents anything that's bigger than you. Yeah. It represents anything that you cannot handle. Yeah. But he said, say to the thing that you can't handle, yeah. move from here to there. Yeah. To there. Yeah. Get on up and get out of my way. Yeah. And the Lord said, it will move. Yeah. But nothing shall be impossible to you. I feel like running all over this building. I said nothing. Can I hear the church say nothing? Oh, come on, somebody shout it loud. Nothing. Nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bible says we walk by faith. I can't hear you. I said by faith. Somebody shout by faith. And not by sight. When the minister asks you, do you want to be healed? Do you want God to heal you? Don't say I know he can. We all know he can. Just say yes. And go on and get your healing. Say yes, I know it will. And the truth of the matter is, if you believe the Bible, it's been done already anyway. When he taught the disciples to pray, he said, Pray on this wise, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Lord help me. As it is in heaven. Not as it's going to be, but as it all Lord help me. That's enough. It's already done. I wish I had a witness here. Look at somebody and tell them it's already done. I said it's already done. Anybody here to know that it's already done? I, I double thought that you to jump to your feet and shout it as loud as you can. It's already done. You don't mind grab your neighbor by the hand. And I want you to shake him and rock him and rock him and shake him. And just tell him God's got it. I need it. And by faith, I'm going to get it. And when I get it, I'm going to tell the whole world that God had it. I needed it. And by faith, it's already mine. I wish I had somebody to say that it's already mine. Say it one more again. It's already mine. Oh, oh, come on, come on, oh, come on. Come on. Say it again. It's already. I 
I, I wish I could just holler one time. Come on. Tell your neighbor it's already done. Oh, yeah. Don't you know? I'm not going to act like that because y'all going to act like you acting. But I, I, I tell you what, if y'all will hit me just for one minute. Don't you know that God is able? Can I get one witness here? Don't you know that God is able? Oh, Lord. You might have rivers. Oh, come on, Zion. That you think are uncrossable. And you might have mountains. Yeah. That you cannot tunnel through. I stop by to tell you that God specializes. Hey, in things that are impossible. Yeah. God will do yeah. what no other power. Yeah. God will do. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. God will do yeah. what no other power yeah. is able to do. Yeah. And so yeah. you have to say it yeah. until you see it. Yeah. Because the world needs you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it. Yeah. Because you really have to. Yeah, yeah. Say it. Yeah. In spite of the fact. Yeah. That things may be somewhat dark. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. In spite of the fact that we really have no earthly guarantee. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. what we say will come to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it. Yeah. Though we've said it time and time. Yes, Lord. Yeah. But just say it. Yeah. Until you believe it will happen. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Until you know you're right. Yeah. For believing yeah. that it can yeah. happen. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Until you literally see. Look at yeah. all yeah. It yeah. come to pass. Yeah. Right before your very eyes. Yeah. Anybody here know that God is going to do it? Yeah. Better than that, anybody here know that it's already. It's already done. It's already done. Say it one more time. It's already done. Come on and give God a praise every day. Oh, come on, give God a praise every day. You can do better than that. Give God a praise every day. Oh, come on, open your mouth and praise God every day. Already done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. I mean, really and truly. And I'm through. I hope I've said something in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? I mean, come on now. But let's just be honest. What good is a filling station with no gas? With no gas. Responded, he said, Son, 
you are with me always. Always. You are with me always. always. Yes, yes. And then get that in your spirit. You're yes. with me always. always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou art with, I can hear you. Always. Thou art with me always. always. Not self, but always. Always. Boy, you're with me mm -hmm. always. Yes, yes, yes. Now, Lord. you can't be with the Father always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without the Father mm -hmm. always being with you. And he went on to say, and all that I have mm -hmm. is dying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. According to the custom, he was the oldest boy. Right. <laughs> so he not only had a portion commensurate to his brothers. Mm -hmm. But everything that the father had. Yes. In other words, he could have administered the estate from the house. Yes. Yes. But he chose to hang out in the field. Yes. I can't hear nobody. Yes. And when you read the story of him over in Luke, yes. it said all it says is now the elder son was in the field. Yes. Yes. Don't say anything else. Just he was hanging out. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. I stop by to tell somebody to come out the field and come on in the house. Because what God has for you is not in the field of me. It's in the house. No need in coming here Sunday morning in and Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but I'm not putting, you know, some Christians think that the broker they are, the more saved they are. I'm saying it better when I have some money. I don't know about you. When, when I can pay my bills, I'm, I'm, I'm saved a little bit. When I can buy something to eat and then get my wife one of them purses that she likes to wear, I'm, I'm saved better then. Am I, am I talking right, somebody? Especially when God said above all things. Yes. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I would that you prosper yes. and be in good health. Yes. Even as your soul. Yes. That's what it said, God. As your soul prospers. Yes. Those things must line up with each other. Line up, God. So that he gets no pleasure yes. out of broken down and sick no, and no. destitute believers. Yes. God loves you. Amen. You're his child. Am I right about it? Come on, somebody say this with me. I am, I am. the righteousness of God. Right. I'll say it one more again. I am, I am. the righteousness of God. Right. That's who you are. Yeah, yeah. You belong to God. Yeah. And God belongs to you. All right. I want you to leave here today. Yes, yes. Knowing that you know. Yes. That you know that you know that you know. Yes, yes. That healing is for you. All right, all right. Yes, that, is yeah. that prosperity is for you. Yes, that's right. Go with the God. Yes. You're a king's king. Yes, yes. And the king's portion yes, yes. is for you. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody shout this Let's just take a while to praise our Father. Come on, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. You can do better than that. Come on, praise the Lord. 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 Everybody, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I've been here today, I've got another service that I have to preach at. I thank you all Hallelujah. for your kindness. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sensitivity. Uh, anybody here enjoy Brother Black? Y'all give me a better hand clap than that. Said Moses, Jonathan Moses is one of my best friends. All right. Uh, he's a great man of God. Yeah. 